All right, today what we're going to do is learn how to do a tilt shift effect video. Stay tuned. Okay, these are called tilt shift videos or tiny town or miniaturized scale model, whatever you want to call it. But what we do is just make it look like it's a toys or toy people in a stop motion animation. And here's some examples. It works best if you're shooting from above. So what you're trying to do is mimic the effect of looking down on a scale model that's not real and uh, doing stop motion video where you take a frame, move one frame ahead, take another frame. And uh, this is the effect you get. I'm gonna make it so that you have a composition in After Effects and whenever you have this kind of footage, all you have to do is drop it in there and you automatically get this effect. You don't have to do it the whole process over and over again. So here's some hints of what you wanna do. You want to look for a busy scene with a lot of movement. I like construction scenes. I like crowds, sporting events, busy streets. You want to shoot from a high elevation looking down. So drone is perfect. You look down, you want to catch the shadow. You want to catch the movement of things going by. It's usually better if you're stationary. Uh, when we circle like that, I don't think it looks as good, but it's up to you. I, you've, I've experimented with all kinds of things. And uh, you also, want to break some of the rules of video that you normally keep. So you want to shoot at a high shutter speed. You don't want to follow the 180 degree rule because if you shoot at a high shutter speed, things are going to be sharper and you are you don't want motion blur on this one. You want it to be a little bit jittery so that it gives the uh, proper effect. We're also going to speed up the video after we take it. So in this one, instead of you can use a time lapse and that's fine. But in this one, uh, a lot of times I'll use video and then speed it up, make it choppy on purpose uh, because we, our mind tells us that small things ought to be moving faster than big things. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, okay, here we go. Now, <clears throat> what you're going to do is shoot at a high elevation. If you're in a drone you want to shoot between 80 and 150 feet up in an angle so it looks like you're standing over a miniature scale model looking down um, the also in this uh, genre the sets are often oversaturated with bright lights and harsh shadows so go ahead and do it in the middle of the day and uh, so you get the shadows and then we're going to oversaturate it um, what you want to do is hover for about two minutes looking down at about a 45 degree angle with the gimbal and um, at a high shutter speed as I, as I mentioned. Then you want to uh, bring your footage into After Effects. I've got one here so we'll bring it over and um, take that and make a new composition. And from that composition if you right click on it go to time and then time stretch and put in there, try something like somewhere between 10 and 15%. So I want about 13, 14 seconds. So 11 works good for this clip. And when I select that, it's going to go down to 13 seconds. So I took two minutes and went to 13 seconds. Now you want to pre-compose this, moving all attributes into the new composition and type in place your footage here. That way in the future, you'll be able to, we're going to save this and you'll, you'll know that um, where to exactly put your footage to make this um, new. Now go over into After Effects and we're going to put in the Posturize, um, what's it called? Posturize Time. This is going to make it jittery. So we sped it up and now we're going to make it so it's like stop and motion. So instead of 24 frames per second, we're going to put in half that 12. What it's going to do is it's going to cut out half the frames and it's going to make it jitter uh, like they're different pictures instead of instead of it being video it looks like it's different pictures if you took a time lapse then you can skip this step you can you don't have to speed it up 
You don't have to put in the posturized time because you've already got it looking like that. This is what it looks like. So we took a nice smooth clip and made it jittery. We actually are making this worse than it looked, but that's part of the effect. Okay, now you want to uh, do a new adjustment layer and put in a camera lens blur. Camera lens, not lane, camera lens blur. Drop that on top of the adjustment layer and just leave it as it is for now. We're going to adjust that later. Next, you want to put in, uh, no, not a new adjustment layer. Let's delete that. Uh, we put want to put in a new solid. Um, and the solid needs to be white. Uh, it doesn't matter what you name this. You can leave whatever it is. But to get white, if it's not already defaulted, click on, um, I'll, I'll call this blur map, but go ahead and click on the color and make sure you're up in the upper left-hand corner. That'll make sure that it's white. So with the, this is going to be our blur map. Okay, so go to your triangle tool up on the, a command bar and overlap a triangle. This is going to show us what's going to be clear and what's going to be blur. Make sure you invert that. So that's black now. If you looked at the uh, adjustment layer, the, the mask, that would be black and that lets the video shoot through. We want to feather the edges and I like it feathered a lot. So I'm going to put this up like, I don't know, somewhere around four. 440 so that um, where the where the white is that's where the blur is going to be so it'll be blurred on the edges and it'll slowly blur as it goes out now we need to go back oh first we need to um, uh, no we need to uh, turn this into a um, pre we need to pre-compose this we'll call it blur map and move all attributes into the composition hit OK and turn it off. We don't want to see it anymore. It's just that's just a map for us. Um, so here we want to put repeat edge pixels, and um, we want to turn layer into blur map. So now when we adjust the blur radius, it's going to blur the edges where the white was. It's going to fade in. This is a little too much, so let's back it down to maybe around. It looks like around 40. Works pretty good. So now you have the edges of this blurred a little bit less maybe. So I got it at 36, but you can do that. Here you can change the shape of the blur um, like a bokeh on the lens from the aperture rings. I don't, doesn't matter. It doesn't seem to change a whole lot. So I'll put it at octagon. Okay. Um, let's play that a little bit so you can see what it looks like. It's rendering really slow. I'll only do a few seconds and see um, what it looks like. Uh, okay, that looks all right. So now we need a new adjustment layer and make sure that it's on top. I don't know if this matters, but I always like to put it on top. Okay, we're gonna rename this Saturate, uh, saturate but you can name it whatever you want. You don't have to name it if you don't want to. And um, this is where we're going to add the, some contrast, some saturation. And, uh, so on the this adjustment layer, put in Lumetri um, color. Drop it on that adjustment layer. Go to the Creative tab. And we're going to increase Sharpen so that it looks even sharper than it is. We want these to look like they're from pictures, not from video. Saturation, we're going to turn that way up. Um, looks like, okay, 170 looks about right. Maybe we can make those yellows less yellow a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to turn up the vibrance. That the vibrance, I mean, that's too high. So let's back it down. Um, okay, we got that where we want it. That looks pretty good, but not enough contrast. So. Um, what's this intensity do? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it does anything. Let's just put that back where it was. I'm not sure what that does. I'll play with that later. Okay. 
in the basic, we can go to contrast and dial that up to make those shadows pop out a little bit. Uh, that's nice because you want it to look like it has harsh light, like you've got studio lighting on a miniature scale model set. And uh, here we go. Let's play that a little bit, see what it looks like. It's rendering super slow. So you want to get close enough so that the things look miniature. Uh, close enough that you can see what they're doing, but not so close that they look as big as life. In fact, this one maybe would be a little bit better if I was a little bit further away, but it looks pretty good. Um, whenever I see a construction scene going on, I'll jump out of my car and, and go up and take a video of it. The other thing you can do is even out an, your office or apartment window if you're at the right height. Okay, now we're going to just go ahead and save this. This is really important. You want to save this in a play, in a folder where you can remember where it is. I'll call it construction tilt shift. You can, I already have a tilt shift in here that I always use, but so I'm just going to name this something different, but I would name it tilt shift. Then in the future, all you need to do, if you want to do another clip, you can render this one out and then you can make sure you're in the project um, field. For example, here's another one. I can drop this in the composition. And um, all I have to do is go down to place your footage here, open that up, uh, not that way, op double click, open that up and highlight the one that's there, then hold Alt and the one you want to replace it with. And oops, it didn't hold. Okay, Alt, click and drag. And there you go. It replaces that footage. And then when we go back into the main composition, the new footage is there. You can adjust the saturation to this footage. You can make it a little different if you want. But you can see how it dumped it right in there. So you save this composition and then you can reuse it over and over again. You never have to make, you don't even have to remember how you made it. Um, just tell your friends to watch this video if they want to learn how. So the only thing is you get, you're in a two minute timeline uh, because that's how long the original video was. But now we've sped it up so it's down to like 13 seconds. So we need to find the end of it. Otherwise, when you render it, it's going to render a full two minutes. Um, and then you'll have to re-edit that and cut out the black pages. So let's go back. This is the last frame. And what we can do is just move the um, timeline so that it matches up with where we're at now. And then it'll only render those 13 seconds or wherever. We're at 12 uh, seconds and 15 frames. So you can just render this. Um, you can render it in whatever resolution you want, 4K or 1080p. And it takes a second. There's a lot of elements in this composition, so it might take a minute to load up and it might take a minute to render. It depends on how fast your computer is. Um, I This is 4K footage, so I would change that, open it up. It looks like the dynamic link is not going to open because it's the, the computer is just too slow. I'm recording this, plus i am got a lot of programs running. So, okay, forget that. We'll just go to 4K. We'll go to a, you know, we'll, we'll go to a preset that I already have. And um, let's try to open it one more time. Okay, it's not happening. Uh, just put that wherever it is that you want it and hit render and you're ready to go. So just remember, you need about two minutes of footage. I don't stabilize it because if it's a little bit jittery to me that it looks like somebody handheld it or the, sh the, the scene shifted, you know, the miniature model shifted. All of that to me adds to it. So all the rules that you have for normal video just ignore here. This is going to take a few minutes to render and uh, then we'll be done. But now you can do this anytime you want. There's a couple of Instagram accounts that I would follow. Of course, you can follow mine. I don't do this all the time, but it's something that I do put on there. Tilt Shift Club at Tilt Shift Club is a good Instagram page to follow. They often highlight my work in there too. And, um, and if you start following that, you'll see other people that do this a lot. It's just a fun thing to do. It works great for social media. 
and also um, just it's just a just a fun activity. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions. If there's anything I missed, and if you subscribe, drop a note so that I can welcome you. If you have any other questions or comments, I respond to all comments. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.